This is part 51 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the advantages of using strongly typed views. Please watch part 50 before proceeding. There are several ways that are available to pass data from a controller to a view in an MVC application. We can use view bag or view data, dynamic type, or strongly typed view. With strongly typed views, we get IntelliSense and compile time error checking. Whereas when we use view bag or view data or dynamic type, we don't have these two advantages. Let's understand that with an example. Let's say we want to display employee's full name and gender in a view, then we have to pass that employee data from the controller to the view. And to do that, we can use one of these techniques. In the first image here, we're actually using view bag object to pass the data from the controller to the view. So within the controller action method, we are using this dynamic expression employee data to store the employee object into the view bag. And then within the view, we are using the same dynamic expression to retrieve the employee object out of view bag. And then we are using full name property to, re to retrieve the value for full name and similarly gender property to retrieve the value for gender. Okay, at compile time, this view will not have any idea of what model it's going to work with. It is resolved only at runtime. At runtime, it's going to look at the object that's stored within this key, within this dynamic expression, and then it's going to check if there is a full name property. If there is, then it's going to retrieve the value out of that property and display that. On the other hand, you know, if you misspell this property name instead of full name, if you type it as full name one, okay, at runtime, it's going to look at that object that is stored you know, in this dynamic expression, obviously it's not going to find full name one property. So it's going to throw an exception at that point of time. At compile time, you will not get any errors. Okay. And another disadvantage is that you will not have IntelliSense as you type these properties on that dynamic expression. Okay. Let's actually look at that in action. And to speed things up, I have this exact same HTML already typed. So here it is. Let me copy that. And let's go back to the project that we have been working with within home controller. At the moment, we are passing the employee object to the view, but I'm not going to do that. We want to store that employee object within view bag object. And I'm going to use the same key, which is employee data. And then we are going to store the employee object in the view bag using that key. And then within the view, I'm going to get rid of this HTML. I'm going to paste this. So let's keep this view simple. So we are just displaying two properties uh, from the employee object, full name and gender. Let's build the solution. So we know that employee object now has got full name and gender properties. Notice the, in the status bar, it's building the solution. So let's navigate to the view. Let's refresh that. So here, as you can see, build succeeded. Now we see the full name and gender of the employee. Now let's go ahead and change this to full name one. And then let's build the solution. So right click on the project build. Notice that in the status bar it says build started. Look at this employee object doesn't have full name one property. But in a bit you'll see that. Look at the status bar. It says build succeeded. At compile time I don't have any error checking whatsoever. And similarly look at this. As I start typing I don't get any IntelliSense as well. Okay, so we still, we don't have IntelliSense and we don't have compile time error checking. So now when we actually navigate to this view, look at that, when we refresh that, we get an exception at runtime. At compile time, we don't have any error checking. All right, similarly, when we use dynamic types, so how do we use dynamic types? Within the home controller, you know, I'm going to pass this employee object to the view. And let's get rid of this line because we are not going to store uh, the employee object within the view back. We are going to pass that to the view. And then within our view, I'm going to say the model for this view is going to be dynamic. Okay, so at compile time, it will not have any idea of the model that this view will be working with. And then to retrieve the employee's full name, I can simply say at model dot look at that I don't get IntelliSense number one so I can type the name you know the property name which is full name here and similarly we want gender so model dot gender now look at this when I build the solution okay build progress it's, it has started the build 
So here we are using dynamic type at compile time. This view does not have any idea, you know, about the model that it's going to work with. Build succeeded. Let's go ahead and refresh this view. It should work now because our employee object has both uh, full name and gender properties. On the other hand, let's include, you know, an error in the property name. We don't have full name one property. So let's build it. So build has started. Notice that at compile time we'll not get any errors. So it says build succeeded and will not have IntelliSense as well. But then when I navigate to this view, look at this, as I refresh this, we get the exception at runtime. So when we use dynamic type or view bag or view data, we don't have these two advantages, IntelliSense and compile time error checking. Let's see, you know, when, you know, with strongly typed views, if we have those advantages. So how do we make our view a strongly typed view? We will tell it the model that we are going to work with at design time. So here we are going to say MVC demo dot models dot employee class. So this employee class is going to be the model for this view. So at compile time, this view has the knowledge of the model that it is going to work with. That's why this view is called as a strongly typed view. Look at that. The moment we have done that, I already have an error here stating full name one doesn't exist. Let me actually compile this and see if we get that error. And by the way, to compile your solution, Control Shift B is the keyboard shortcut. Notice that we get the error as expected. So we have compile time error checking number one. And number two, notice that as I press dot, I get the full list of properties that are available within this employee object. So you will have IntelliSense as well as compile time error checking when we are working with strongly typed views. Okay, so let's select full name there. Let's build the solution. So build started. So we shouldn't get any errors now because full name and gender properties are available on the employee object. Notice that build succeeded. Now let's refresh the view. We should be able to view the full name and gender. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.